What's up, Lore Masters? This is the second part of a three-part series. For the rest of this video to make any sense, please click on the top right-hand corner right about now to see the very first video. Trust me, you're going to want to be doing that. Don't worry, I'll wait. Okay, with that out of the way, let's just get into it. Interestingly, a lot of people got angry with me over the last video. A constant complaint was that I stopped way too early. I really couldn't disagree more. All of the discussions that I had done were up to the 2250s, and that was pretty standard and straightforward. However, after the 2250s, it gets pretty fracking complicated, at least until the 2300s. As stated before, the uniforms of the 2250s would be very brightly colored with the identification of the rank on the sleeves. Oh yeah, this is apparently also done in the real world navy, which is awesome and something I didn't know. So apparently, if you have the ranks on your sleeves, that's not really a big deal, so way to go. And it does make sense that Roddenberry would know about this, given his history and then trying to match it up with the real world navy, so I stand corrected there. As stated before, the standard duty uniform consisted of dark gray or dark blue trousers and the division color top. The division colors, as noted, were generally gold or yellow for command, then, uh, I guess, muted yellow for operations, and blue for the sciences. Some variants of this time would have the women wearing a cow neck collar and apparently also having closed zippers on their uniforms. Other variants of uniforms for both men and women would consist of a shirt with a closing seam that originated from the side of the neck of the uniform all the way down. One of the more interesting pieces of lore is the fact that during this time period, there was a lot of diversity in what you could wear. Oh, and saying that there was a lot of diversity means that there was no fucking consistency. For instance, the uniforms had dress jackets that could be worn or not worn, really it just depended on what you wanted to do, there was no consistency to it, and they weren't considered standard generally. According to Memory Alpha, these jackets were edged with gold trim, matching epaulettes, and worn over the standard uniform itself. Additionally, Starfleet had heavy jackets that were in blue-gray, and these jackets were utilized by some landing parties, and sometimes landing parties just didn't have them, even in similar conditions, and included a utility harness that was worn underneath that had a laser and a communicator. And apparently, it wasn't uncommon for some to have coveralls. I mean, these individuals would wear work coveralls or jumpsuits with the assignment patch on the breast and would have the olive color for command, khaki for operations, and blue-gray for the sciences. I mean, this was at least in some instances. Again, it didn't really seem to have any consistency. And ultimately, we would later see overalls worn on ships, on outposts, and anywhere you really wanted to wear them, and they were worn by all divisions in the distinctive colors. Unlike future iterations, there are also equipment belts that are worn when necessary, and they also had hats. Yeah. Hats. Moving into the 2260s, distinctive changes occurred, and it might not be immediately apparent to the untrained observer. One of the major changes, and so this would be considered a minor refit if we were talking about ships, is the coloring of the uniforms. Command would now be gold, operations and security would be red, and the sciences would be blue. Uniforms generally had a collar added to them and new rank insignias. The duty uniforms of the 2260s included a top that was long-sleeved with division colors. A closing seam was located on the collar to the left shoulder itself, and this is similar with what we had seen in previous uniforms. The tunics typically bore rank insignias, sleeved stripes, and assignment patches. They also had a black collar with a V-shaped bottom, though some could be collarless, which would allow for the wearer to instead wear a black undershirt. Both variants would have both black pants and boots that accompanied them. From the research I could find, captains and line officers also had alternative options for what they could wear. This included wraparound tunics that were distinctively green with gold piping. Also, they were able to wear a tunic that would have beige and orange colors versus the yellow that was common for command. short sleeve variants did exist of these uniforms, though I believe this was primarily seen with the doctors. Which really makes sense when you consider the sleeves could be some form of encumbrance when they're working on their patients. During this time, women and men would also be given the option of wearing a skirt. The skirts themselves appeared to be extremely short and, for women at least, they would be required to wear underwear that matched their division color. Women, and again probably men, would also have the option to wear leggings or hose. The female tunic had two different variants, one with a black collar and then another that would have the collar colored the same as the tunic itself. 
Based on the information I found from Memory Alpha, and this is something I haven't been able to confirm, but let's face it, uniforms aren't exactly top tier in Star Trek fandom, so Memory Alpha has been an amazing resource for the series. But again, based on the information that I found, it would appear that the Outpost personnel would wear a different variant uniform that included a shinier fabric with a dull beige color and a black undershirt. Now, given the examples provided by Memory Alpha and the videos I've seen, I'm not convinced that this was standard across all outposts. It may just be certain outposts, or maybe only the outposts that we've seen. That said, I don't have any contradictory evidence, so this one is up in the air for me. Dress uniforms of the era included a tunic with a Nehru collar worn with standard pants and boots for the males. Women would be able to wear a miniskirt with a black collar. It was similar to the standard uniform, but with a longer skirt. There would also be gold piping along the collar versus the other uniform itself. Though, because why the f*** not, variations on each uniform style depended on the rank of the officer. Lieutenants would have dress uniforms that had an assignment patch with a thin gold piping around the collar. A lieutenant commander wore the tunic with similar piping, but decorations were worn in lieu of the assignment patch and rank stripes. Commanders and executive officers had thicker braids around the collar, captains had additional piping down their shoulders, and commodores and above had an additional gold piping that ran the length of the sleeve. And of course, none of this has ever explained why these variations exist. Also, you could wear a kilt, cause why let the women have all the fun? Might as well let a defeated people by the British crown enjoy their heritage. Just saying. When working out, men and women wore an athletic uniform that was colored red specifically and came with red leggings, black socks, a tunic, and a belt. You could also wear a unitard. At least it's not a kilt. <laughs> Last but not least, specialized vests would also exist, and generally you would see this with people who worked in the galley. Now why, I'm not completely sure, I guess it just looked good on TV. Again, like we see in most eras, even though the style had officially changed, you would still be able to see older uniforms from previous eras, and they would be worn throughout the 2260s. So let's take a look at the 2270s, and I'm gonna be honest. This design is probably one of the largest missteps, in my opinion, that Starfleet has made, at least when it comes to uniforms. This change seems completely and utterly random. So let me talk about this for a second. I did like six minutes of research when it comes to the real world and military uniforms. I found that militaries will have drastic changes in uniform style, that within a decade the uniforms could look almost nothing like they did before. This was generally due in part, and again not limited to, but generally due to changes during war or environmental shifts. However, there's no rhyme or reason for what I see in the 2270s with Starfleet, but let's just continue. Starfleet personnel would have the attire completely changed to that of either a jumpsuit or tops with matching trousers. The colors would be drastically changed to have white as the command division, orange and green as science, and red, gold, and gray as the operation divisions. Flag officers would wear a two-piece that included dark gray pants with white and dark gray shirts. For the flag officers, rank was on the e epaulets as well as sleeved stripes and included a gold Starfleet command pin on the chest. The medical division would stand out again by going back to having the standard all-white uniforms that were similar to what we had seen in the Discovery era. Most uniforms would additionally come with short sleeve variants that featured a low v-neck or flared v-neck. Rank was shown on epaulets and there was also a division color assignment patch. Additionally, wraparound tunics would be available to all personnel, and last but not least, there was a two-piece tunic with belt, also known as the Luke Skywalker style. Also, all uniforms would have the option of having a life support belt buckle. A life support belt buckle. Huh. And again, these uniforms make absolutely no sense. There not only isn't any rhyme or reason as I've stated to the choices, but they don't seem to make any sense for those who would find themselves in combat situations. I mean, again, it would be really easy to see who you'd want to kill during this era, and a lot of people like to say, well, they're on ships, so they're going to be fine. Yeah, but we also have transporters, and the people on the ships will be beamed down to the combat areas still in their uniforms. So that defense doesn't make a lot of sense to me. But... I mean, at least they can't get any worse, right? Oh, fuck you.